Hi, John here. It's uh, Saturday today, the 15th of July 2017. <clears throat> the latest uh, we are progressing forward with the um, Paramount Chiefs here in New Zealand and what's next uh, on the agenda. Uh, we have a meeting coming up next month, uh, the 18th, 19th, 20th, up in Te Hapua, and there the uh, Paramount Chiefs uh, will bring together the native tribes in its original state form uh, when the Crown um, came to New Zealand uh, and put deeds of titles, the old deeds of titles, onto land. And I've come across uh, uh, some videos um, just last night and this morning. I've been watching and getting a few more clues. There are a lot of advanced people who are finding ways of dealing with uh, principalities and councils and tax and the way they collect money. It's still going to come down to the king's uh, rule of law and land titles. Uh, on how <coughs> they are constructed through uh, government and here in New Zealand is a prime example of uh, colonization on two different fronts with Treaty of Waitangi 1840 that's one document and the other document is the Declaration of War Flag the 1834 prior to the 1840 Treaty of Waitangi that's two separate entities on collecting of rent for leased lands and conquered lands around the world fashioned out here in New Zealand on our native title land you can see from one side of the country to the other and just about from one top to the bottom of the country and measure it and find who's on the land and then value it up and then tax everyone on its land mass area, its sea mass area of nautical uh, um, <coughs> miles, 200 nautical miles out to sea around the circumference or economic um, zone um, uh, of um, 38 trillion. That's what they put on it, the government here in New Zealand last year. 38 trillion worth of minerals. And then when we get down to titles, there's such a thing as um, Cuboid. <coughs> Cuboid land title <coughs> means the land from where you stand up to the heavens <coughs> and the land down to the centre of the earth. And then you've got the water as well around it. So there's different titles. You've only got a, um, a title on the land uh, which is called a there's a name for it. Uh, anyway, I'll find it. Uh, it's the um, land title itself without the rest of it added to it as in Admiralty from the sea up the rivers and uh, uh, that's another title, the Admiralty title which allowed the uh, crown, which is the king, uh, to um, circumvent the will and hop on the land. This is the only country in the world with a flag of a king pushed up on land with its admiralty ship stuck fast on the land in Waitangi. Now that gives <coughs> a court where the native grand jury trial magistrate court, magistrate being the man with his magistrate documents, deeds of title inside this bag, old deeds <coughs> granting to immigrants the right to develop land and lease it off the crown, the king. And so that's the, the king's <coughs> crown grant that we hold here with this flag is its executor and its chief commander, paramount chiefs, and sheriff. We've got a hat for the sheriff. 
here somewhere, um, with an 8-point star on this flag, the 8 points <coughs> of St. Patrick order, four corners of the earth, in the four corners, the blue sea and the blue sky. So those elements join together in the king's uh, crown ground title. Uh, forms the basis of our meeting up in Te Hapua at Te Hiku o Te Ika Native Grand Jury Trial Magistrate Court. All marais are magistrate courts when we've got this. When we walk into the marae with this bag and all its doctrines and documents of a king. We're speaking for the king. <coughs> In fact, I'm speaking as a sheriff. I'll find my hat. Hang on a minute. <coughs> Here's my hat. Okay? It's got the seal on it. Right there. The seal of King William IV on his horse and his ship of Admiralty in the background. <clears throat> and his crown and the eight points star of St. Patrick, King William III, created the principalities, councils to collect the rent, the rates, and the administrative costs of running his government, parliament. <coughs> and um, <coughs> the birth certificates are the St. Mary's Church. So those two churches are tied into this seal of a sheriff. So this goes together with the paramount chiefs equal to the king. And we're putting this court hearing together again the second time in Tahapua. Um, that's the uh, Te Rerenga Wairua or the Spirit of the North where all the <coughs> dead ancestors go back to the islands where they came from. They come in from Waiapu or Orangitukia into Tikitiki, St. <coughs> Mary's Church there, <coughs> as the birth, death and marriage certificates inside this King's Bench Native Grand Jury Trial Magistrate Court. And so we are putting together uh, this uh, organisation, as from the 20th of March uh, 1834 <coughs> in Kororareka, um, where the British hopped off the ship and they had their magistrate court and set up their business in Russell. Blew that up with the declaration of war flag <coughs> and shifted to Awaroa in Helenro for Auckland province. Now we get down to the province of Auckland, stretches down to Tiki Tiki, St Mary's Church. So now you can see we are coming to life after 183 years, 20th <coughs> of March this year was exactly 183 years <coughs> King William IV gave us this most powerful flag in the world of commercial trading bank business in private contract with us. There's a contract, the King's contract, deeds of contract, under the Baldwin Act 1846 Municipal, Munis, Municipal Act of 1846. So, um, we've got this man, Steve Taylor, he's the hound dog, on video that I'm sending out to the uh, Paramount Chiefs and our staff here and in Britain, UK, uh, to alert them on our next move against the Crown Corporations, Queen on this side, and Bill English, Prime Minister, and Therese... Uh, um, the Governor-General, Patsy Reddy.
uh, here in New Zealand, uh, to put them on notice. They are already on notice, but we've had our <coughs> Grand Jury Magistrate Court hearings in Kororareka uh, with the Navy flag mast on top of the hill. That's the first ship that came in to Russell or Bay of Islands and parked themselves on the land and said the land belongs to the King of England, King of Britain, UK, King William IV. <coughs> <coughs> that was the first D title of a king in this country and the whole world for that matter in our time. So from that we transferred that title, transfer title, from a D title into Waitangi Marae King's Bench Native Grand Jury Trial Magistrate Court. You'll see that on videos that I've put out. We've had the hearing there <coughs> with Kingi Toro and Hohepa Epiha and uh, also uh, Woody Painter. Though we never had any other true Native Paramount Chief in there. <coughs> they weren't aware of this <coughs> until we opened up that same court in Titi Marae next to the popos or memorials of their ancestors up there in Ngāpui. <coughs> Tauranga Kira or uh, Po Whenua, which is those popos, the wood carving of their ancestors in the paddock on the Titi Marae ground. Now that's the title to this country there, right there, and the Moriori title of the Manukau carving. Those carvings are the title to New Zealand and inside Waitangi Marae is my own Rahui Marae tiki tiki carvings of my ancestors in there. <coughs> Uetaha is my ancestor to Matauru Wānoa and the Reverend Wānoa Torua uh, to that Tiki Tiki Marae and the first birth, death and marriage certificates, bond instruments of security on the stock market in New York. <coughs> so that's inside this authority as the King's land contracts, deeds, crown grants that we are going through the court hearing up in Tahapua, the Spirits Bay area. That's our spirit. The Maui Crown Spirit <coughs> is in us as the other memorial title to the world. The Maui statue is the other wooden uh, stone, sorry, carved memorial to my own Wānoa Tahitian royal family in Rapanui to Mokonui in the <coughs> Waiopu district uh, area council and the Matakawa district council area on the East Cape. So those deeds of title I have in this Magistrate Court, being the Magistrate myself. <coughs> so what I'm doing for the Paramount Chiefs is bring them up to speed, up to date, of information they are picking up because they own it. They own all this information. Only those who are Indigenous surnames and blood DNA. Not a Maori with strange sounding names. I must stress that because that's the Crown New Zealand Queen Elizabeth and Queen Victoria side mysterious with our King's Magistrate Court. Look. <coughs> so I made a lot of notes this morning. Um, for, um, for the Paramount Chiefs. So this video is really uh, a notice to the Government of New Zealand that 
take notice, we are taking action to seize this country back into the King's Bench Native Grand Jury Court under our control <coughs> straight to the Westminster Magistrate Court subject to the Edinburgh Magistrate Court in Scotland where the titles to all the lands and the instruments are held but subject to the control of the King. King William III and King William IV. King George III, the father of King Ernest Augustus I, King George IV and King William IV. There. Those are our kings, the four kings in this corner, the smaller red cross of the, uh, of the King George Red Cross. There's a small cross there with a black line around it, which is the Protector, Protectorate Navy, Lord of the Sea. <coughs> Sir Philip Jones is liable under this flag of jurisdiction to us. <coughs> He's liable to us for all the <coughs> corruption and fraud in New Zealand and to recover all the debts of 970 million trillion trillion pound note that I've written up because we make the law here with the paramount chiefs on the Morais right through this country. They are highest courts on these lands for jurisdiction of the king in the king's bench court or in any court we can go in there with this magistrate court and set ourselves up. We know what we're doing. We know how to do it. <coughs> and upgraded from the Acts of 1650 to 1702, King William III, and the Acts of King William IV, 1830 to 1837. Prior to that, King George IV, his brother, on to the period of 1830, when King William IV took over. We are only going in jurisdiction from 1650, King William III, to King William IV, 1834, cut off. We're not going any higher than 1834, with this flag was given to us. On the 20th of March, 1834, that's the cut-off date from anything forward. Is not included in our Paramount Chiefs, <coughs> King's Bench, Bank, Court recovery process of debts owed. Uh, so um, I just want to just check on something I may have written uh, in my notes this morning. There's quite a bit of information uh, I'll be putting online. Um, lots. Deeds of transfer. Uh, Ontario Land Association. So that's where I've been reading Ministry of National Resources and Forestry. Crown Land Patent for Property. William Snowden. So I'm reading what they're doing in mun municipality. <coughs> Deeds to land transfer. It's called the Crown Grant Contract. Crown Grant Contract. Right? So that's where we're at. At the present time. Um, executor, creditor, that's who I am, the executor, executor, I say executor, because we can execute anyone who is fraudulent. Um, executor of the trust, <coughs> we're setting up the executor of the trust. First rule of congressional Act of 1871. So these are just some of the uh, 
uh, notes that I've taken. <coughs> Cuboid land title means where you're standing on the land, what's down to the centre of the earth and what's up to the heaven. That's a cuboid title um, that we're putting together. That covers anything with minerals, oil in the land that's underneath that the Crown in its municipalities creates tax and money to go and drill it and do what they want on land in Canada. Are you watching there? Um, Harvey and um, um, Raymond Faithful? <coughs> Take note. Uh, we are doing these titles for you there in the same fashion as what this man hound dog, Steve Taylor, is saying. He's very good. I like his videos, not many of them, but he said he'll upload some more. But he's from Canada, so you better get in touch with him. Um, Steve Taylor. <coughs> um, politicians oath to uphold the Crown rights bound by this document. Ontario Land Association, click on the Crown Land Patents. I'll show you in a minute, this guy. I'll show you in a minute. I'll just show you now what I've been working on. So I'm just doing a letter here to our Paramount Chiefs there to send this information to them and I'll just go back to um, this guy um, Steve Taylor he's talking about the DUP party the, um, <coughs> um, Democratic Union Party and um, Steve Taylor I just gotta find uh, the other video I was I'll just show you his face. Oh. Oh, that's him here. Oh, gosh. Wrong one. Sorry about that. Here he is here. That's him there. Yeah. Very good. And this will include discussion with the public, discussion with Northern Ireland on all issues. So we are actually going to see a democratic process where the public are involved. And we this other guy here is good too. Bill. We've seen this in BC. Christy Clark has now. I want to see the other, the other video uh, uh, that he made. I want you to watch this video <coughs> of Steve, the hound dog. And 17. Well, warning uh, to home buyers, that's a good one. Here. I keep stumbling across these things. Uh, and this one. First, humble apologies, I have just been extremely busy, which is why I haven't uploaded any videos lately. So he's going to upload um, some videos, so it would be good anyway, to see. I'm assuming that you have all survived rather well for the last week. Okay, we'll um, go to his other one. Here. Now this is the one I've been watching. You need to watch it a few times to grasp the uh, content of what he's saying. Very good. The it's, deed itself, uh -huh, there. which deeded this property over to William Snowden. And again, I'll actually read all of those words. Uh, so, so I've got to do this uh, for our chiefs. Really <coughs> I'll get that all sorted with our, like our magistrate court. <coughs> We're okay, so what in the game. Uh, I have a little download here. This is from the Ontario Landowners Association. You're watching this, and Harry? Link to my website and Check in with this man. He's got more videos coming in Canada. So you uh, 
natives over there. We're getting our act together now, right on track. So I just read what it says on the And front page. Uh, nothing's going to change. Request at your the crown land patent that grants you the land and tenements forever. Recognized by the courts, the Crown Land Patent is a legal set of rules or an agreement which is known as contract law. An act for a promise and a promise for an act. So basically what, what happened, um, the land that is owned by the Crown in Canada was obtained either by treaty through the, uh, the Indians and uh, of course they became reserved lands, hence the term reserve. And uh, or they won them by war, and they confiscated them. Uh, anyway, these lands were all owned by the crown, and as an encouragement to get people to move over to Canada, uh, they would offer uh, plots of land which the uh, the patent would be issued on that land, and basically deeded to that person in return for you know clearing the land. Uh, with That's what happened in Auckland. Putting up a homestead. Uh, this kind of stuff. I'll tell, it, tell you about it after. <clears throat> so these Crown Land patents were issued to people who emigrated to Canada on behalf of the Crown. So these Crown Land patents, uh, one of the things that people don't generally realize, and I'm sure you've heard stories, I'll, I'll get into this in a second, uh, but when you mention the word property, Okay, most people think of a square or an oblong of land. Listen to this. And there's a this. building on that of some kind, or there will be a building put onto that of some kind. Whereas actually in law, uh, the a property is a cuboid. Okay, so it goes as high as the heavens and to the center of the earth. And you may have heard uh, these bizarre stories of uh, people who've moved up to Bancroft or out into the wilderness in BC. You know, they got two or three hundred acres and they woke up one morning and they heard mining equipment. And that is because uh, some mining company had staked a claim on a mineral below the surface. Okay, so when you buy your property, when you buy your house, you only have the surface rights of that property. Surface rights. Uh, if there happens to be a valuable mineral beneath your property, somebody can stake a claim on that and they can come in and mine and all they have to do is promise to return your land to the way it was <coughs> when they finished. Now, it might take 40 or 50 or 60 years to mine out a piece of property. So that's basically your, your piece of property is gone for that entire time and you, you have to put up with the consequences. Okay, so <clears throat> when you have this, de this uh, Crown Land patent, that cannot be done because Here you we own go. the entire <clears throat> You listen to this uh, Bundy in Manahi? Heavens to the center of the earth. <clears throat> okay. And um, now, are they winning? That's what I'm going to be doing with these grants this week. Uh, everyone is a little bit different. Uh, now I, I we are the king's the, um, partners. On the screen, this little piece I will add into this video. But basically, the crown land patent that I have gives me uh, the deeded right to this property, except for one thing: any water passage over or under this property belongs to the crown. So this would be to do with logging, um, you know, if there's a, a riverway, a river course, all of this kind of stuff. And so really, uh, it, it's not in effect here. There's no, there's no issue with water here. Okay, so uh, but basically what this does is it gives me complete jurisdiction, jurisdiction over my property. Over your property. And anybody who disputes that actually has to take me to court and prove it in a court of law. There we go. This document is not a valid document. There we go. And now I've heard several cases we are the court. Uh, from the Landowners Association where farmers have been taken to court to dispute this by the province and um, province basically when they of got Auckland. there uh, nobody from the other side showed up. And uh, the case was closed and um, the whole thing was let go because the province knows that if this document is upheld by a court of law and it will be upheld by a court of law. That means that it's going to undermine the authority of the province. 
of the province. So there, I'm just giving you a, a little um, the sort of things that you can do is that the bylaw officers are no longer permitted to come on my property because I have jurisdiction over my property. Uh, there are many, many, many things that you can basically dig your heels in when the council says, no, we're going to change it to this way. Uh, you can say, no, 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 not on my property or not. You do what you want over there. But uh, as long as I have this document, I'm insisting that you take me to court we are and court. prove that this document has no value whatsoever. And of course, I mean, the Municipal Act itself is based on the Baldwin Act of 1846. So if they're going to say that these documents are not valid in court, well, then I think you would have an equal right to say, well, I'm not going to listen to the Baldwin Act of 1846 because it's a, a Crown document. Okay. Another example would be say, um, and don't laugh at this, this, this has been seriously discussed in the city of Quarter Lakes, of metering of private wells. There we go. Water. Okay. Mineral uh, water. So just think about that for a second. Metering a private <laughs> well and charging you for water that is in Bottle the water. Uh, with this crown land patent, you would be able to resist that move. There you go. Legally resist that move. And the municipalities are so cash-strapped right now, they are looking at every possible way that they can raise money through tolls, levies, and taxes. There we go. So, farmers, please do yourself a big favour and get your crown land patent. And also another thing, that all politicians, when they become politicians, uh, they sign a document that says that they will uphold the Crown and the rights that the Crown affords to the public. Okay, so even your politicians are bound by this document to uphold your rights. They have to support you. Okay, and this is not just me talking. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to be a lawyer of any kind, but uh, if you go on to the Ontario Landowners Association, and as I say, if you go down below in the uh, notes, uh, you will see a link that I've left there to my website. Uh, you'll be able to go to the uh, page, click on that button to the Crown Land Patent. And uh, anyway, take a look at some of the issues, and they have a lawyer. They have a lawyer on staff at the Ontario, Ontario Landowners Association and uh, she answers all kinds of questions about this stuff. So this is not me saying it's a legal document, this is a lawyer, this is a land lawyer saying that this is a legal document. So I would urge all of you, especially farmers, but anybody who lives in a rural area, um, I mean I would try it anywhere, all, all you need is your lot and concession number, and uh, you know you may have to go and get a title search to find out the actual lot and concession number, but um, download this in, in this package that you download. Uh, there is an application form to the MNR. Let's see, I'll just show you that here. There we go. There's your application form. Now, I faxed mine in because when you fax, um, you, they have a record that they've received it at the other end. Because I so I just to want to um, leave it there myself. because it's quite long. And I go to it's the very desk good. and I ask <coughs> I'll the woman behind the desk where I get my application for a Crown Lab patent. And she looked at me like I had two heads. <laughs> and she's getting all flustered and she says, oh, Crown Lab patents, Crown uh, Doris, Doris, do we have any Crown Land? No, 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 we, we've never heard of Crown Land patents here. So there you go, um, Bundy and Manahi and Hiriwini, Paramount Chiefs. <clears throat> I'm just giving you a little insight on what this guy, Steve Taylor, is saying, the hound dog. <clears throat> He's another person I've picked up on watching videos. If you don't watch what's happening on YouTube, there is a lot of information out there that shows you what to do. And so what we're going to do is follow what they're doing in real, in Canada. 
and they're more advanced with um, UCC law and all the Roman laws, whereas we don't use those laws. We are going straight king jurisdiction of this flag. You can't get any higher than that. They have no say here. They have to take us to court if we produce this document with our authority equal to the king from the paramount chiefs and the hapu up north right through this land and the Pacific Islands straight from Te Hapu back to Te Te Marae. We're going back into the tent after the hui up north. That'll be 18th, 19th, 20th of August 2017. We're having the meeting at um, Te Hiku or Te Ika Marae <coughs> for this event, historic uh, legacy of 183 years of this flag cut off at 1834, 20th of March, as being our jurisdiction to claim the um, what's that word? Something that title to the land. I should write it somewhere where I can see it. Uh, Cuboy, Cuboy. I better write it down. Cuboy, Cuboy land title. Land title of a king. Of the king. Yes, you couldn't go any better than that. Now that stops the crown. <clears throat> they have to take us to court. They can't go any higher than our court in the Marae. Did you hear that? I'll just say that one more time. This flag and paramount chiefs equals the king's jurisdiction and authority ruler of the land. <clears throat> okay, and all his laws apply in this magistrate court. Native. This is a native magistrate court because we're writing our own law from those king's laws that I've seen. Okay, now this man here is making statements that anyone who comes on his land, <coughs> he'll just pull their paper out and say, I have the uh, crown grant title. I have the, uh, there's another word for that, what he said. Under the Baldwin Act of 1846, the Municipal Act allows him to have full title to his land, bar the water. So he's more or less saying he has the, um, this word, cuboy, land title of a king, because of the document he's gone and applied for that land title deed. It's a transfer. The deed of title turned into a land transfer title. So that's what I really wanted to say. Um, there was another word for the um, the title, surface title. That's it. I better write that down. All these things I've got to remember. Surface title. That means the land title on top of the earth, not below or up above. That's all you're getting when you get a certificate of title on the land. Next minute, there's some mining trucks going through the land because they've got the right to go and drill right on the land you bought or got transferred to you <coughs> from a land transfer, not a deed, from a land transfer. So you have to go back to the deeds, um, your paramount chiefs because they've been so used to um, arikis and uh, also iwi Maori titles as CEO or just following the system that they've forgotten who they are as real king's people. Uh, so that's uh, what I really wanted to say. I'll just 
say this one more time to uh, on this video cited as fact evidence to our court hearings in the Titi, uh, in the Te, te Hapua uh, Marae up there, the Te Hiku or Te Ika Marae uh, Magistrate Natives Court. To Te Ti Marae uh, Native, na Native Grand Jury Trial Magistrate Court. That's the same Magistrate Court. To the Auckland uh, Magistrate Court, which is we're going to one of the Marais, either the Manito or Marae, and we use as a Magistrate Court, or we're going to Te Hunga, Te Hunga Waka Marae in Epsom, where I've been holding my hui's before for One Tree Hill. I will book that, and um, um, the Chiefs will book that. Um, <clears throat> if that's okay, and then to Rahui Marae, Tiki Tiki, on my own Wānoa Marae, and the carvings in that Waitangi Marae comes from there, on my Uata uh, Chiefs, Paramount Chiefs Marae. Okay? Um, and so that's the other uh, uh, court there. These are magistrate courts. We can go into any Marae as magistrate court. But because the land in Auckland on Cook Street, we're seizing that land, we're seizing the lands that we're staking out. We are seizing even the land at Te Hapua, in the immediate place of that marae, around its boundary area. So that's another discussion. We can do that at the same time in the hearing up there with that land, the T marae land, TB3, uh, Waitangi, 23 block, the TB, the T, TB3 block, and then down to uh, um, Auckland, the uh, 77 Cook Street, or 1 bar 61 Cook Street, its original deed, 339 deed title. Um, so I'm holding deeds for there, the Manukau Moriori uh, uh, title uh, to Auckland and the Kaipara and Awaroa. Uh, our uh, native court, um, Rogans in Helensville, that's where Auckland came from. I'm holding all those, all of that title in this magistrate court file, filing cabinet right here. Okay, it's all in there, the deeds, <coughs> and the deeds for Waitangi TB3 block, <coughs> one house on the whole of the Bay of Islands is in here, as a title to their and the ship of Admiralty on the other side, we seized that at the same time, the flag and the ship from Britain, not Australia, from Britain. This side, the king, the queen is on this side, gets the bill from this magistrate court. So all the people who are following Bill English, John Key, Jerry Mataparai, the uh, ambassador for New Zealand, on their side of title, jurisdiction, faces this jurisdiction here of king. King says, king goes. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. We stand there in this Seneca Trust to claim the king's wealth, his inheritance and his titles to all the conquered lands in the world with this seal of the king and his crown here at the top, and his flag he gave us. Okay, no argument? Silence in the court. Ignorance does not count or constitute jurisdiction. So he's saying, Steve is saying, you have jurisdiction. We have jurisdiction here against Bill English, the man. The man himself. We're talking as magistrate, the man, against Bill English, the man, the Prime Minister, as Bill the debtor. Magistrate court, the creditor. That's me, John, to you, Bill. Take notice. 
you've already got your bill was sent to John Key. He's liable. He's liable. A whole lot of you in Parliament, all of you politicians, 120 of you, have got a trillion pounds on your head each. And all your Crown Corporations, businesses, everyone, every single person has got a trillion pounds on their head. Those are figures that we ascertain and we audit to the King's orders. That's our business in private. That's what this flag is. It's a private contract, the King's land contract or the King's Land Grant Contract under the Baldwin Act of 1846, Municipal Act. This is the Municipal Act of St. Patrick's Order, Rent Collector, Debt Collector, Bank Creditor, 8 Point Star St. Patrick Church Order. That's our business. And the St. Mary's Church in Tiki Tiki, the first church in this country, and the world for that matter, to use birth, death and marriage certificates as security of investment bank instruments on the New York Stock Exchange to make money out of it. That's our business in this magistrate court, King's Bench. Paramount Chiefs equal partner. Okay, we are the second party partnership of Admiralty, Embassy of Admiralty to the Navy, Royal British Navy, First Lord of the Sea, Sir Philip, Sir. Um, Forgotten his name now. Anyway, um, First Lord of the Sea and Theresa May is First Lord Lord of the Treasury and Philip Hammond as um, Exchequer, man with the checkbook, gets the bill. Philip Taylor, Philip Taylor, First Lord of the Sea, Sir Philip Taylor. Is the First Lord of Sea. He's our legal partner with this flag, representing King William the Fourth, King William the Third, inside Westminster Magistrate Court in Westminster City, Paddington, <coughs> Buckingham Palace. Okay, that's us. That's us laying down the law here on this land to recover the land and all the debts owed to the people of New Zealand who join this side in the King's Bench Court recovery process. All you people on this side get the bill. Every one. <coughs> the ignorant people who have ignored this side and our authority on these lands. They have fashioned Maori, the crown I'm talking about, of New Zealand, government, parliament, cabinet, and the governor general, Patsy Reddy, and the past president, the past governor general, selling these lands for themselves, for their own financial investment interests as threats now. The Queen is a threat. The Pope is a threat. The PD files are a threat inside Parliament in Westminster. And the Rothschild banks are a threat. The IMF is a threat. NATO is a threat. UN is a threat. The World Bank is a threat. <coughs> Israel is the biggest threat. Netanyahu, Bidi, you are the biggest threat to the King's Bench, Grand Jury, Trial, Magistrate, Court in New Zealand and Westminster Magistrate Court and Edinburgh Magistrate Court, St Mary's Chapel and the Holy Grail and 
Silicate Trust belongs to us. Do you hear what I say? I'm serious. Don't laugh. Same as Steve, Steve Taylor said, the hound dog says, don't laugh. Because he's serious with that king's title, land title. What do you call it? It's the king's <clears throat> King's Crown Land Patent. There, that's that's its word, right wording. Crown Land Patent. Mm. Okay, deeds to land transfer. Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. That's who we put on notice inside the New Zealand government. <clears throat> Deeds of Land Transfer. They've gone through the Treaty of Waitangi and either war, well, they've gone through war of the king to take these lands and any Indian or native agreements. Those three things or documents that allowed the king to take the land by force, by agreement or by treaty. There, those three elements are our control in the magistrate court. Private. Private. Nobody's business to inquire into our private business between the Paramount Chiefs, myself the Sheriff, Bank Creditor, Executor of the Estate, Citigate Trust Estate of Birth, Death and Marriage Certificates, Tiki Tiki, <coughs> St. Mary's Church. Whakawhitira Native Court, to Aoroa Native Court in Helensville, to Korora Reka Okiato Native Court. Those three Native Courts constitutes the jurisdiction of Admiralty of the King. Full stop. Now, Bill English, you are notice again and again and again and again. And Jerry Mataprai Andrews, Ambassador to New Zealand in London, you've got more than a trillion pounds on your head. You've got bounties on your head, answerable to these paramount chiefs here now. As of now and as of before, on the 6th of February 2017, in Titi Marae and Waitangi Marae, on the 10th of April, on the 15th, 16th, 15th, 16th of April 2016, notice inside Waitangi Marae, Native Grand Jury Trial Magistrate Court, to you, and you ignored all of that, you're not going to ignore this time, with these Paramount Chiefs and myself, and the Hapu, the commercial land owners now, in this jurisdiction, straight to Westminster Grand Jury Court in <coughs> the Magistrate Court. There. Okay, and the Queen is out. We've got King Ernest Augustus the Fifth. We're putting through the Magistrate Court up into Hapua, back onto Titi Marae, onto Auckland Provincial. The province of Auckland stretches to the east coast, Tiki Tiki, Rangitukia, 1831, stretches right there, fixed, 1831, and the Manukau birth certificates, 1830, and the Wānau certificates, 1831, Tiki Tiki, St. Mary's Church. There, those elements are in this bag, as our jurisdiction more than you can wish to face.
You have to take us to court. Which court are you going to take us to, Bill? <laughs>